Anna. You know, like her whole life is like about this hot, you know, well, how can I serve you? She built, she had temples, she made this, she lifted this goddess up single-handedly from being this sort of minor deity to being this major deity in Sumer, just on the, her, just by being centered in that drive, okay, and, and her relationship with the devil. And what women have done when they've been centered in that relationship, you know, it has been founding institutions of higher learning, uh, founding uh, the institution of social work, uh, creating a multiculturalism, uh, inventing uh, romant the poetry of romantic love, which is what Sappho did. She was the first one to write poetry about romantic love between human beings. Uh, these are not small matters in the culture of uh, human history. They're not small matters. They're enormous. Enormous. And it's never told like this. Ever. And I, you know, I'm not making it up. It's just true. Or from a lesbian-centered point of view, I, I think it's true. If you feel it, you can feel like the truth of what women and lesbians in particular have done in terms of building culture and, and, and society. Uh, and so if all women were raised up to be centered in this relationship with the devil, uh, I think we'd have a really different world. Mm -hmm. Profoundly different. Mm -hmm. I think women would stop cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and stop feeling like I'm a victim of the patriarchy, okay? Because we have, we have the power, women have the power by making relationship with this inner source to, uh, to change things, to, by becoming centered in our own erotic lives. Um, so when you're doing psycho psychotherapy with lesbians, this, um, and I think with all women, but this, this getting into the mother-daughter relationship um, is critical and kind of deconstructing what's going on there because um, lesbians were incredibly protective of our mothers um, uh, uh, often and we often uh, don't want to know the ways what I'm describing here about the ways that we weren't mirrored and the way she didn't see us um, and the level of trauma that exists as a result of that in our bot that we're carrying in our bodies Often we don't want to uh, we don't want to go there. It's uh, it's it's very painful. It's what Jung calls a work against nature. It's not the natural. It's like trying to turn the Titanic to uh, really face into that and express the hurt rage, a tremendous hurt rage, and not having been seen and mirrored by the mother, and to feel it and express it. Uh, and, uh, and the reason for that, one of the reasons for that is very understandable because she's also a love object. So, you know, it's a terrible conundrum for the lesbian. You know, like how do I really get into um, and really feel and speak out my terrible hurt rage at my mother and uh, when I, you know, she's also the object, when, I, when it feels like I'm going to destroy the, the object of my love in the inner world and I'll be left with nothing. And this is where the double, you know, the therapist holding this double in mind is like, you're not left with, this is the, this is the power of the archetypal world. That there actually there is this archety these archetypal structures that, will, that do step forward and are present. Um, um, and if you're not, if as a therapist you're not holding that idea, and you're not holding that, then when, the, when you encounter this kind of resistance, and I don't want to go there, it's like it's very hard pressed to kind of you know, advocate for why it's a good idea. Uh, so holding the um, idea of the archetype of the devil and this inner beloved is, um, is, is critical to creating a, a, an, a safe environment, environment for the um, for the lesbian client to be able to begin to express some of these really difficult feelings, difficult, hurt, angry feelings at the mother. So, uh, 
um, what are some of the techniques you could use to like develop a relationship with the devil um, in psychotherapy and just in your own inner work, in your own life? Um, So, because um, she's she's hard, she's elusive. You know, I don't know how many people, if people here feel like they can connect with her, they have some sense of her. It's hard. So, um, um, one way to work with this is to um, access memories. The first time I was ever, you were ever in love. The first time you ever felt like really turned on to another woman, um, I, or you really felt. Um, uh, drawn to somebody of the same of the same sex. Um, what was that like? Um, um, writing about it, writing the story of that, um, maybe drawing it, finding photographs of, of you and that person, how old you were, um, um, maybe making a collage of that time in your life, um, seeing if you can find images. Um, and maybe making an altar that um, that uh, that when you look at it, you have that feeling. It uh, helps evoke in you the feeling that you had um, in that early uh, that that with that of that first love experience. Um, Um, you you can do dream, uh, likewise working with dreams in the same way. Like images, you know, figures will show up in the, in your dreams that feel erotic. To draw them, to dialogue with them, to have conversations with them. Um, uh, um, to journal about them, and um, and in the in the therapeutic relationship. Um, to really invite that, okay, to invite, to really be curious, because there's this reparative thing that happens that is beginning to repair what didn't happen in the early um, relationship that I'm talking about, where the mother wasn't really curious about, you know, about your inner life, you know, uh, and your, especially your inner erotic life and your inner, your feelings about being a lesbian and your attractions to women. Like wanting to know, okay, like there's a powerful intervention in wanting to know. Like tell me about it. Okay, tell tell me about it. I want to and because you, I want to know more. Tell me this. Tell me that. Tell me what she looked like. What was she wearing? What did it smell like? Where were you? How 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 did you feel when you were with her? Uh, um, what did what was her voice like? And try to conjure all of that. Um, with the genuine curiosity. Uh, and then to expect to encounter this toxic shame that I've been talking about and resistance and this sort of disbelief that anybody would really be interested. You know, that anybody would really, really genuinely be interested. And to expect um, reactions like that, uh, defensive reactions against uh, going there. But I, you know, I found that um, in working working with uh, gay people, um, that to be able to say, you know, to keep keep identifying the toxic shame and the w and the way it shows up as a shame shaming the gay self, the lesbian self, and it will show up in all kinds of ways, little put downs, I was stupid, I made bad decisions, like, you know, somebody will say, I should, you know, I shouldn't have left, I shouldn't have left home, I abandoned all my friends and my family. Oh, why did that happen? They beat the crap out of me, they hated me, they shamed me, they humiliated me, but I abandoned them. Okay, that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna happen. And for you to reframe that and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, Weren't you, wasn't there some abuse going on here? Wasn't there some problems in the situation? Weren't you taking care of yourself um, by getting out of that situation in some way? Uh, 
And to be able to, to uh, um, sort of celebrate the beauty of the, that person's gayness, wow, like just it's so beautiful that you're gay. Mm. And you know, even if you don't say it out loud, to hold that. And one of these one of the ideas here is again, I said talking about history, um, educating. Um, educating a client about the devil, um, you know, I had somebody, somebody, you know, um, the client might say, you know, I remember a time when I felt so great, um, when I went up with my best friend, I felt like so charming and witty and smart and wonderful, and you could notice, like, oh, that's the devil. That's, that's the devil. You were experiencing your relationship with the devil through your relationship with your best friend. You still got your best friend inside you. And, 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 and you can cultivate that relationship and that feeling that you had with that best friend uh, yourself. Uh, she's still there inside of you. That's not gone. Because what the, and I'm going to return to where I started, which is that the, the anima, the animus, the soul figure, the devil, is a projecting factor. It's, the pro, it's a projection machine. So there's this absolute, absolutely convinced, I lost her. She's gone forever. I can never retrieve that. But it's not true. It's not because what, what, what was projected into her actually belongs to you. And through this work, this is a work of reclaiming. Okay, so there's a tendency to, you know, split off and put in or put our greatest beauty into those we love. And then feel lost without that person. But that person, but that 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 beauty, whatever you're experiencing and feeling and seeing in that other person belongs to you. And that can happen in the therapeutic encounter too. And you can be mindful of that as a therapist. Like, you know what? I know that feels like it's over here with me, but it's not. That's in you. That's in you. That beauty that you're experiencing, that's in you. Let's work to see if there's a way for you to feel that in yourself. Okay? Uh, you can work with it in these, in these practical ways. And I would say it's like kids who will say, no, 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 it's her, it's her, it's her. No, those are kids. It's you. So I, you know, for myself, I feel like I'm saying we can do this. It's like, you know, it's a real challenge to value myself. You know, it's, it's an ongoing challenge to feel self, to be self-valuing. Uh, uh, and to partner with the places that feel terribly crushed and hurt and inferior ongoingly and to stand up to the shame, inner shaming parents who say that there's no value in lesbian love. Um, uh, but you know they may not say it just like that. You know, it's not so direct usually. They usually usually sound like they got a point. <laughs> <laughs> But if you work with it, you, you know, and you keep standing, but, but you can feel, it doesn't feel good, you can, you know, get off of me, back it off. Okay, and then get some breathing room, like, and then work with the kids, like, okay, what is this reminding you of? What, you know, what is this situation reminding you of in your childhood? So there's